Um, so I have a, we call it an organization, I started something called Dudes to Dads. And like they said, there's not a lot of dad participation. I, um, I'll go kind of you know, over how I started this, a little bit about myself, and then I'm gonna give you some specific tips on how to connect with your kids. It's not that these don't apply to women. Um, it's just, usually the dads need a little bit more advice. They're not willing to take it. Um, women often, and this, I'm stereotyping by the way, the entire presentation will be stereotyping. Um, <laughs> women have a tendency to feel a little more. Uh, guys think a little more. And so, this kind of uh, puts it back on track so that guys can kind of understand how they might be able to feel a little more and hopefully get a little bit better connected with their children. So, let's see if that'll work. It does. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk about a little bit myself, a background, um, not because I like talking about myself, but it'll maybe give you a little bit of perspective on how I got here and why we're doing this. Um, talk about Dudes to Dads and what it is, and if you are interested in learning more, you can always do that. Uh, I developed or am developing something that I'm calling the fatherhood formula. And what it is, I'll explain, but it's basically uh, through the things that I've been doing, kind of the components that I feel like if you want to have dad success, which to everybody it could mean something different. That could mean you're just not like your parents. It could mean you're just like your parents. Uh, it could mean your children are healthy. There's a lot of different things of what that success means, and I'll go over that. Um, there's, has anyone here heard of uh, Susie Walton and redirecting children's behavior yes. as a class? Mm -hmm. And also Joy of Parenting. Um, she was the one who introduced me to this. These, I'll talk about some of these classes that I will highly recommend for parenting classes for both of you. Um, but this was a, one thing about connecting with your kids called a GEM. That's what it, it's an acronym. It's a genuine encounter moment. This has been something that when I learned this, um, it really changes the perspective on how you deal with your children. And it, that's, that's a pretty strong statement, but I'll explain it as we go. And then what everyone came here for is to actually get some information that's useful of, you know, how can I connect with your kids? A lot of these things you might look at and read and go, oh, of course, like that's total common sense. The reality is, is we don't often do it. Um, I study this stuff. I'm involved with it. I mess up all the time. I mess up every day. In fact, this morning I didn't do too hot. But it's one of those things where when you're conscious about it, you're thinking about it, um, and you get that information over and over and over, yeah, you, you tend to kind of start doing those things. Um, and then at the end, if there's a Q&A, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to, to, to answer. So I had a pretty good childhood. I had great parents. Uh, my mother was actually an author and seminar speaker on relationships. So I kind of grew up in this environment where, you know, really loving environment. Um, so, you know, for me, I also, because I had this sort of relationship thing, I actually had a little bit of difficulty finding somebody who would meet my expectations, if you will. And I thought I was going to be a dude for quite some time. I mean, I was doing success, being successful, had my toys, doing all these things. And then all of a sudden, fell in love with my wife, which changed everything. My just whole perspective changed. And uh, she actually was a childhood friend. I've known her since fourth grade. Um, and uh, just really strange how that all happened. I don't need to go into it. But basically, now I'm married with two kids. I went from you know being happy dude, doing my own thing, doing everything. <laughs> all of a sudden, I've got two kids. I wanted to share these. These are some pictures of us during Halloween. Um, Toy Story, which you, it's a little past that now, so you guys might not have to deal with Toy Story. Um, the middle one was this year where we were all uh, Michael Jackson genres. So I was Thriller, my wife was Billie Jean, my son was Smooth Criminal, and my daughter was Bad. Why I bring this up is a lot of what we, or I and my wife, try to do is about having fun. It's about also connecting. <coughs> Our children, because they connect with us, they're actually willing to dress up with us. That will change. Um, my son wanted to be Michael Jackson something, but guess what? We all decided, okay, then we'll go along with it. Because we still wanted to keep this connection. And that's something that's really important I'll talk about is, is how you connect, keep that connection. You know, my children are five and seven, so I'm curious to see how well I can keep that connection as they get a little older. I have siblings who have teenagers 
connection's a little bit harder to do when they get a little older. Um, and I ought to, because of my upbringing, I, I thought I kind of knew how to parent. I just said, well, I'll love the kids and everything will be fine, you know? And that's not exactly how it worked. Um, the transition from going from single guy into being married now, having two kids, is huge responsibility financially, stress. It was quite tough for me. Um, I will, you know, I'm, I'm honest, that's why I'm doing this, is saying it wasn't an easy transition. Uh, the thing that men have to realize is you're all going through it and you're not alone. And it's not going to be easy. You're going to you're going to be angry, you're going to be tired, you're going to women go through the same thing too. Um, but not a lot of people recognize that the man goes through a lot of the stuff. You know, the woman goes through the labor, the physical part of it, which is tremendous. But there's a huge amount of emotional, financial, and all the other strains that the guys go through that people just kind of think that the guy will deal with it. You know, they think that he just man just has to kind of man up and uh, you know deal with it. So that was something that was really tough for me. And so I took some parenting classes because at the time, my mother, who was of great influence, had passed away. I had my second child. And all of a sudden, I'm realizing it's like there's got to be easier ways of doing this stuff. So I took Susie Walton's class, which I will recommend is, is, is amazing. And she became sort of a mentor for me um, and realizing that there's just a better way to do this. And as I did that, thought, you know what, if I'm doing this, I'm getting these tools on how to parent, how to like, communicate with my kids, there's got to be other guys who are dealing with the same thing. So that's where I created Dudes to Dads. And what it did is started out, it was a meetup group. Now, I don't know if you guys know what meetup group is, but it's where you know, people of like-mindedness can get together, and sort of like this, where they get together in, in a group. And the mission was just to help men transition from being a single guy into a family man. That's... That's simple. And so how we do that, or how you know we do that is through, I have the local meetup, which we meet every three weeks. It's you know nominal couple dollars to just share with the food and stuff. But guys, we get around, we talk, and we deal with stuff. We talk about our wives or girlfriends or whatever, um, and the kids, and stress, and work, and that kind of thing. Because the reality is, is that Women do this with their friends all the time. I don't know, guys, if you knew this, but women actually talk about this stuff. Um, you might hear them on the phone. You might hear whatever. They actually talk about this stuff. We don't. You know, when we go to a social event or we go hang out with our guys, we're either doing a sport, watching something, <coughs> drinking something, consuming something. It's not really talking about how our kids, blah, 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 and how emotional that felt made me feel. And blah. We just don't do it. And so this is an outlet for that. And um, so we facilitate that, and we just talk, and it's a great group of guys that come and go um, to do that. It's in Encinitas, and if you, I'll give you the information to, if you have an interest in that. Um, the second is a weekly podcast, and if you're familiar with a podcast, or not familiar, but basically it's like a radio show, but it's recorded. Um, Mr. Allen, who's videotaping back there. Oh, I will add too, sorry. I need a disclaimer. If anybody doesn't want to be videotaped, we absolutely will edit it out. So if there is some concern of any kind for whatever reason, just let us know. I will make sure that any sort of things do not edit out. We'll put a big black face over it. No, I don't know. <laughs> a big circle over it, you know. Um, we'll make sure that it's not. It, it, this is just for our own use, uh, maybe on the website, and also for members if they miss it to, to be able to see that. So sorry about that. But the weekly podcast, we have 40-something different podcasts already, all about these topics. How to deal with anything from um, a parent dying or somebody dying in your family, uh, to not getting sleep, to um, you know, men's issues of addiction. <coughs> I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that we deal with. That's on the podcast. Anybody can listen to it. We, we make that available. It's free. Anybody can. Really, really important. So you're down at their level. You make eye contact with them. They're going to feel really good. Another important thing. Now, this happens when they're on the phone, or you're on the phone, and this is a great technique to sort of <coughs> make them be quiet, is you just put your hand on them while they're, say I'm the, the adult now, you put your hand on them while, they're talk, while you're talking. It kind of quiets them up for a second. Or you can grab their hand or start massaging them. You're giving them that attention and that touch, even while maybe you need to do something, you need to handle something, you're still touching them. And you're still giving them sort of a little bit of a warmth, which is what, that's all they want is your attention. So you're able to kind of do two things at once. So if you can't do it right away, either way, giving, give them loving touch. If you can, you make the eye contact, you put your hand around them, 
giving them 100% focused attention. Now, like I said, you're not going to do this all the time. But this is something to be mindful of when your child has something that they come to you with and they're excited and they're interested. Guess what? If you keep ignoring them like that, they're not going to come to you very much. They're going to go to somebody else who's a little bit like the wife, who's a little bit warmer. Wow, that's so awesome. You know, and the dad's like, oh, cool, you know. Um, just stereotypes. It's just, you know. um, so that's, that's something you want to think about. Following their lead means let them talk as they can, you know, two and a half years, whatever, you know. But even when they're that little, you let them talk, let them get out what they need to get out, and follow their lead. You don't even really have to say much. You don't have to say, oh, this is the most wonderful thing. I mean, you don't even have to gush. They just want to connect with you. They just want your attention. They just want you to look at them. They just want you to touch them. That's all they want. Especially when they're like three or two, you know. They don't, they don't want a conversation. They just want you to talk, you know, just want to be held. Or, um, and this is the big one for men. You've got to learn this one. You have to respond from your heart instead of your head. And this is one of the hardest things to remember. If you can't remember it, put your hand over your heart when your child comes up to you. This was a trick. It, it actually worked. Um, it may look weird every time your child comes up to you doing this, but... <laughs> It actually forces you to kind of think and stop for a second and say, okay, if it was my head, what would I say? Which is what you, you know, we're thinking, oh, I got so much to do. Hey, I'm sorry, I'll do it. You're not really thinking about what does this child need right now? What does that child want? And you're not going to over, uh, you know, it's like too, you can't, you know, give the kid too much attention. I mean, you're not going to do this all the time. But you're going to want to make sure that you are responding with your heart instead of your head. So that's a genuine encounter moment. So it'll look a little bit different than that. It would look where you're coming down, you're doing this, and you're saying, hey, what's, you know, what's going on? And you're softer, too. And so that's a genuine encounter moment. Think about that the next time your child comes up to you with something that is, you think it's probably stupid, but they think it's really, really exciting. Um, and just connect with them like that and try it. And you'll see the difference in your children as well. So that's something that I learned, I love it, it works, it feels really good. So let's talk about feeling connected. Well, we all want to feel connected. I mean, adults, everybody wants to feel connected. And you want to be connected with your spouse, you want to feel connected with your family, you want to feel connected with everybody. Even your friends, you know, that's why now social media and everything, it's, quote, you get to feel connected. Um, it's a false sense of connecting, but... I'm an internet marketer, by the way, as well. So even if I talk negatively about the internet, it's, it's just kind of how I am. Here. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Very critical about non, uh, or I should say technical connection versus real connection. I rant a lot on my podcast about that. And, and that's why I see even the first thing about the cell phone. I have cell phones. I use things. I'm in technology. I hate it. It doesn't help with connecting. It, it's, it's been the worst thing in my life. It's, it's distracted me from my kids. It distracts me from my wife. That's the reality. I just want to make a statement. It's on video. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I know, I've heard this. I've heard this. <laughs> so when kids don't feel connected, and you have the opportunity, because most of the children are very small, you have the opportunity to make those connections now. And I will tell you, it's going to get harder and harder as it goes on if you don't start now and make those connections. So what happens is, if they don't feel connected to you, or the family, or whatever, they're going to find something else to connect with. And what they're going to find is drugs, sex, gangs. For teens, it, it's bad. And that's what it is. If you find out what the, what the mindset of all these kids who are having these problems, they do not feel connected, so they find these other groups and these other things that they feel a part of. That's what a gang is. You know, oh, I, my home life is horrible, so I'm going to find a bunch of friends who love me. And that's, what's being connect that's what connection is. So that's something that you really want to be mindful of is you have the opportunity to connect with the kids now so that you avoid trouble in the future. And nothing drives us more than fear. So it works. Um, and like I said, they'll do, they'll do some bad stuff. So the nitty gritty came here with 11 different ways to feel connected. And as I said, I'll pass out, a, I have a handout that I'll, I'll pass out. Um, these are, there's probably 5,000 ways. These are 11 that I like, and um, I, they resonate well with me. 
for various reasons. Um, and I think that for dads, they're easy to do, uh, relatively easy. And so uh, that's why I wanted to introduce these. And like I said, you may look at them and go, well, of course. But the reality is, is we're not doing it. And even, like I said, for me, these are things that I have to remind myself all the time. That's why I do these, is so I can remind myself of them. This first one, have a meal together. Now, this sounds crazy, but there's a tremendous amount of people that do not eat together. Now, what does that mean? Well, you may have activities. You may work different schedules. You might have whatever it is. Um, I was lucky enough to grow up having meals together, and I can tell you from this, even now, it is, it's such a fond memory for me to know, well, I had my seat here, my sister was there, my sister was there, and we talked about our day. I actually looked forward to that. Not certain teen years I didn't, because I didn't want to talk about it. But I look back at that now and how valuable that was, that I was able to have the meals together. Now, most people might have dinner. There are, I've heard situations where they say, well, we can't have dinner. Okay, well, then have breakfast. If you can't because of schedules or activities, I'm going to suggest you change your schedule and you change your activities. I'm going to say, you have to have that time with your children, otherwise you're going to be in trouble. That is a perfect way to do that. So people say, well, we watch TV, one kid will eat, the other one, they have different schedule. Put them on the same schedule, get everybody together, sit down and have a meal. Even if it's a couple times a week, and I will tell you, there's been a tremendous amount of studies, they've said, up to 50% reduction in teenage alcohol and drug use with me, people, the families that have meals together. Now, I think there's some other factors because the families that have meals together are closer or whatever it is. But basically what they're saying is you have a better chance of having that connection with your child if you spend time with them. And that's an important thing. So that's the first one. Have the meal together. I talked about this on the other one. <coughs> Hug them, touch them, sit near them. So I've got a, uh, I was in uh, the meetup group, and there's a, a gentleman who, this is one of the early groups that we had. I asked him, I said, when was the last time you came home from work? Talking traditional stereotype, husband, you know, dad goes to work. Um, and came home and just ran in and gave your kid, or he has two boys, a huge hug, kiss, and just, he's like, I don't know, I think I just kind of, hey, I'm home, whatever, and then I drop off my stuff. My kids are usually playing outside and do whatever. And I said, so we, we each got around the room, we did homework assignments. And that was his homework assignment, was to go home from work, immediately drop his stuff, and go hug and kiss his children. So he reported back the next, it was like, he did it two times that week. He reported back and said, the first night, he was watch. He did it. He did it. Everything was great. His son then said, "Hey, can you play soccer with me?" And he played soccer with him outside. They were kicking the ball. Later that night, they all. He was sitting down watching. He was sitting down watching TV, and his youngest son, who he very doesn't, he didn't feel very connected to, came over and sat on his lap and snuggled with him. I mean, I was literally. I was about to cry. I was like, this, and so was he, because this is a guy who's like, I really just, for whatever reason, I don't know that he he just didn't know how to connect with his kid. And I said. It's easy. Just hug him and kiss him. And so when he did that, like I said, that works for me, is that the child then came back to him later. And it was like, usually we'll go to mom. And it's just he's not a very touchy guy. It, it was pretty profound what happened. And so that was, I mean, it was a, a, this is a true story. It's a very, very you know, specific thing. He didn't have to do very much for his child to feel very close and feel very good. Um, and hopefully that, you know, that means a lot more down the road. And the reason I, you know, I, I say it with the hug and the kiss is the same thing I, that I was talking about before, is that men have a tendency, when I talk with dads, they just aren't as affectionate. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. You know? um, it's, it's something that's, uh, that's, that's interesting, and, and when you become more affectionate, your kids will become more affectionate too, towards you. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm proof of that, for sure. The other is reading to them. Now, this is sort of common to... A lot of people say, of course, read before you, know, you go to bed. I read a, this was a story, um, it was a single dad, and his daughter was in, I think she was maybe four years old or something like that. He 
read to her every night. It was like in the New York Times. He read to her every night for nine years. He never missed a night. Now, they said if he did miss a night, he'd do it in the morning or something, but he never missed a day, essentially. It was like nine, I don't know what the, you know, thousands and thousands of days in a row. I'm sure there was other reasons why he was connected with his daughter, but that bond between those two was significant. And as she went off to college, that's when he said, like, the bond was just, and they would even sometimes call each other and read. I mean, it was something that they shared. Now, I will tell you, there are some nights where I don't feel like reading. I just want the kids to go to sleep. I don't, I don't want to read. I, it's, and I don't want to read the same book for the 20th time. I don't. Um, my son has a book that I'm just so sick of. I don't know. It's um, something about Captain Underpants. I don't know. And my kids speak. They're, they're learning Spanish, so it, he, he has Spanish, too. <laughs> and it's just, you know, he, he want, he's seven. So, I mean, he, that's all he cares about is, like, funny things and disgusting things. And, um, but we try to read to him. And in fact, in school, especially like in kindergarten, that's a requirement. You're supposed to read at least 15 minutes a night in our school. Um, but it is a time where you get to share and, and do that. And it's for a dad, you get that chance to connect. You know, as your kids are really, really small and maybe you're trying to, you know, I was going to do a little bit of tips when like, you know, when the kids are really babies, it's like, it's really hard to connect with the kid. I mean, let's be honest. When it's zero to one, zero to one and a half, as a, you know, you're trying to breastfeed, you're wearing the baby, you're doing all that. It's, it's like, the connection's only for you. It's not really for the kid, you know? And you're trying to connect with this, this thing there, and it just doesn't care, because you're either not the one that has the milk, or you're not the one who's as, as caring, or you know, caressing the baby. But this you can do. This is an easy one. Read to them. Be the person who reads to them. Um, I have a very good friend who, because he goes to work early in the morning, um, he puts his kids, two boys, he puts the kids to bed every single night. Unless he has some function like dudes to dads or something like that. But he reads to them, does all the things, the routine, does it. He is the one who does it every single night. And for him, at first it was a burden. Because it's like, really? i got to do this every day? Now he looks forward to it. Because that is his bonding time with the kids. He gets to do that. He thinks of it as a privilege. He gets to read to them. He gets to do that. I'm sure there are some nights where he doesn't. But he says that he does. Um... You'll, you'll just, you'll know that. We all as parents know that there are some nights where you just don't feel like doing anything. You don't feel like teaching them anything. You don't feel, you just want them to go to sleep. In fact, what, uh, there was a, my favorite, it was a, it was a if anybody familiar with some e-cards? Or your e-cards, like funny things on the app. So it said, my favorite sound is my child laughing. My second favorite sound is my, the sound of my child sleeping. And it's true. I mean, as you know, it's, there's something about that nighttime where it's after, it's after 5 o'clock in my house, nothing positive happens. It's like, <laughs> it's just, it's, there's no teaching moments, there's no nothing. Um, so this isn't important for twins, because I, I'm going to imagine, because even though my kids are 5 and 7, we treat them as like, a, as, as like one. Everything's always together. Okay, I'm going to go play soccer, will they both come? You know, it's like, really? You know? They just, that's what happens. And I would imagine with twins it's the same thing. So this is going to be extra important. I don't know if you guys teach this or whatever, but you have to spend one-on-one -on -one time with them. Separate them. Get them away from each other. It's good for growth. It's good for everything. And it's good for you. Make a date with them. I will tell you and be honest that I've been very bad at this. I want to be better, and it's been hard. But it's something that I'm working on is making those individual dates with the kids. And you have to make the date, and you have to stick to it, because there's always something that comes up, and there's always some excuse. And as your kids get older, they don't even want to play with them. Which I just realized this past weekend, when my wife was gone, that my kids would rather play with their friends than me, and it was the first time that they had done that, and it hurt. And see, this is a place where I can get that out. <laughs> so you've got to make a date with them. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything significant. That could be a date playing at home, but preferably just get away and get out. Um, you know, we do live close to the beach, go to the park, whatever it is, just that one-on-one -on -one time. And I will talk about some other opportunities you have to do one-on-one -on -one time. But you make a date with them, and um, you get to see and experience something that's much different. You know, my kids are wonderful together, but they're better alone. It's just how it works. One-on-one, -on -one, they're amazing. The conversations, the, the emotion, everything. They get a chance one doesn't hinder the other. They're not smacking each other. I mean, it's just... 
You get one-on-one -on -one time with them, and it's pretty cool. So that's something that you can do. Ask them questions about their life. It's very profound. <laughs> um, and let them talk. You know, and just like I said, listen. You, you don't need to even make suggestions, but you're asking them questions like, how did that feel? What did you think about that? Even if you don't want the answer, you don't care about the answer, ask them those questions. I mean, when they're two years old, they can start talking and doing verbalizing and stuff. Ask them those kinds of questions. It's like, what's going on? You know? Did you do that? And, and, and it sounds very easy, but ask them about how they think and how they feel and those kinds of things, rather than just, did you put the red blocks together or you know, whatever. I mean, ask them questions that are really are meaningful, and you'll be surprised that you'll get some answers. Um, and as they get a little bit older, those conversations are really, really cool. I mean, even with my five-year-old, I'll tell you, we, we, we have some awesome conversations. And um, <coughs> basically, it's not a conversation. I'm listening, and she's talking. Which is, it's actually easier to do, but I don't know why we don't do that. Um, so figure out what they like. Now, this is a tough one. I know, see the gaming thing. It's almost like the same thing for, as phones to me. This is not my world, but this is a lot of kids' worlds. They may like sports. Not all of them like to talk. A lot of them like to play and do things and do other things. Figure out what they like and do it. And do it with them. And not something that you like, but something that they like. And you might even hate it. You might even hate playing video games. Who cares? Learn about it. Talk to them. And you'll see the kids light up. My son, when I start talking about Captain <laughs> Underpants, <laughs> He loves it. Loves it. Loves talking about it. You dress up like that. We have not. <laughs> if you saw the outfit, you'd see why. Um, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> well, my wife did that. <laughs> um, or my son can, yeah. Uh, it's just, you, you've got to figure out what they like, what they're passionate about. And even pretend to like it, and you'll be surprised that you'll actually like this. It's hard to do this, because I find this hard with my spouse as well. Because there's some things that my wife likes that I just don't care about. I don't. I, I, I want to try to care, but I don't care. <laughs> and whatever it is, but that's on video too. It's a cautious of money. <laughs> we'll edit. We can edit that. <laughs> um, yeah, you just you got to learn it. You got to learn uh, what it is that they like, and just and just share in that experience with them. Play a game. It could be a board game. It could be a craft. You know, if uh, and you know, as a as a dad, um, I'm not too. We're not too into the princess stuff. Um, so, but we there are some like superhero things that we're we do, and so I was into Supergirl, and you know, I wasn't dressing up. And um, you know, other things that you know aren't that interesting to me, but I pretended they were. And my daughter loves it, and then my son also, of course, gets into it, too. He was Superman, she's Supergirl, it works. We did Superman one year, too, by the way. That was, that's, I didn't want to just flood my pictures. <coughs> um, this is my favorite, just as you can tell. Um, creating a technology-free time and place. Um, whether that's dinner, whether it's after a certain time, whether it is at the park, whatever it is. I'll tell you, this, this was kind of disturbing for me. So my kids recently... Um, are in martial arts. They started martial arts. It's really cool. And so they're in the dojo studio thing doing a thing and there's like this parent area or sitting area. I'm not joking. There's maybe a dozen parents sitting there. This, it, this is a four o'clock on a Wednesday. Every single parent in there was on their phone. Every single parent. Not one was not on their phone. Now, your child is doing something. And now here's the worst part of it. I made a conscious error because I was watching everybody. I would have probably, I mean, I looked, uh, okay. Because everybody was else, else was on their phone, I made a conscious effort not to. And I can't tell you how many times I saw the kids of the parents go like this and look at their parents. And every single time the parents like this. And then they'll be, oh, mom, you say, oh, yeah, hey, hey, you know, I mean, whatever it is, like fake, you know, it was dads too. I'm not saying it was dads. But that was just, that was, that was, that's kind of disturbing. Um, and, it's not that, and here's the one thing. Now, not saying that somebody didn't have something important to do, work, whatever, and it's, you know, you're doing that. Uh, saw a couple iPads. The women were shopping, so, which is crucial. You've got to do that. 
Um, a dad was on Facebook, which is important too. And so, you know, and what all it means is that they just weren't that interested in being, you know, there's, there's, it just wasn't captivating their interest. But who cares if it's not captivating your interest? Your child is doing something that is important to them. It matters to them. So when that child looks over and just wants that approval, which the sensei says you're not supposed to look over anyways, but they do, because <laughs> they're four to seven year olds that are like, you know, it's like herding cats. It's like, they, they look over for that, so it's like, oh, did you see that? I just hit that, you know, or I just kicked that or whatever. So that was something that I just, it, you know, I took that to heart as like, wow, you know, I, I, I have to make a more conscious effort to do that. And I'm, I'm just as guilty of doing that too. But because everybody else was, I saw it and was like, oh wow, everybody's on their phone, you know. And that happens at soccer, and it happens at piano, and it happens at every other event that you're going to go to, you know. School recitals, <laughs> you know, <laughs> happens too. So just be conscious of that, that, you know, that the evil thing we have is the phone um, is really disrupting a lot of that connecting in which you have those opportunities to connect. Because that is an opportunity to connect with your child. And it's even an opportunity then because afterwards you get to talk about it. Hey, what was so cool? What did you do? How did it go? What did you, know, you like about that? So this is actually a real picture. This is a group of, um, you guys ever heard of the Indian princesses or Indian guides? So now they call it adventure princesses and adventure guides. And I was introduced to this. Your child has to be five years old. And what it is is the dads get to go camp with the children. And so this is a group of us dads and we have, I think there's probably you know, 50 of us in, the, in, the, in our tribe. And then there's eight different tribes in a nation, and then there's, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of dads just in an Encinitas San Marcos area that do this. It's amazing. It is the most amazing thing that I've ever had to do with my kids. This was a picture of paintballing that we got to do. This is during the camp out that we did. Um, I would suggest that when your child turns five years old as a dad, you do this. Uh, some people do it because they get to hang out with a bunch of guys. And like, you know, the guys stay up late and they play poker and there's some, oh. there's some rules and things that aren't broken. <laughs> um, but, you know, have a cigar, whatever. Um, but you have the time to bond with your daughter. It also, you have the ability to do this with your sons as well. So they do it for both. I was ambitious and wanted to, they, they do one a month. So if you're with the guides, the boys, it's the dad and the boy, and you get to do this once a month. Uh, with the girls, you get to do it once a month. I was ambitious and thought I would do this twice a month. That's a lot of camping. <laughs> um, so that lasted once. <laughs> and I wasn't somebody who camped very much. I mean, I, you know, it's actually glamping. They call it camping, but it's really glamping. It's like, I mean, you have a tent, you have everything, you're back. You know. um, but there's some guys, depending on the site, may have an RV or something. But basically, it's organized activities, and it is fun as heck. The last one I got to go with my son, I was one of the only dads that was on the BMX track. Because a lot of the dads, just for whatever reason, didn't care to do it. Or I loved it because I was a BMX biker when I was little. And just got to go right around the track. Zip lining, paintballing. It's the coolest thing. As a, you get to be a kid again as the dad. You get to do all this stuff. And then your daughter, and my daughter is right here, of course, in the front row. With <laughs> gun pointing. And, and all the, what's amazing is the differences between going with a group of girls and going through. So now I go every other month with the child. So I go every other month with my son and every other month with So I only have to go once a month. And that works great. Uh, we're go, we've gone to, like, you know, Indian Hills. We're going to Joshua Tree this next week. Uh, there's, there's a trip to Catalina. It is really, really a cool thing to do, and it's through the YMCA. And I don't know if they have it more down south. I don't know, but up in North County, it is huge. It's a really, really big thing. Um, and I, I couldn't recommend it highly enough. And um, it, it's, it's amazing to see. We even got to go in Del Mar Beach, which is a Camp Pendleton, um, and the Marines wake you up. And they do like boot camp. With, oh, it's, it was awesome. And the, I mean, you see these little girls, and they're doing push ups. <laughs> you know, waking up at 6 30 in the morning, camping on the beach. Just some experiences that you have. Now, I will say, when my, my daughter is five, it's a little bit more difficult. It's not like you just, unless you have a kid that really loves camping. Um, we're still in the transition of enjoying it, meaning, like, for her, she's kind of still getting used to it. We've gone on a couple camp outs. We're going to one in two weeks, and I sure hope she's going to enjoy it, because then I won't if she doesn't. Um, but 
My son absolutely loves it. So I, I can't recommend that enough. And so that's activities. I mean, that's a planned activity. It really takes, well, it does take a lot of effort on your part, but you don't have to plan anything. It's all <coughs> taken care of for you. But any kinds of activities that you can do with your kids, like I said, um, that activity promotes the ability then to actually have a conversation with them, if you want to have a conversation. So that's something that is really, really fun. Um, I will say, and I'll be honest, the last camp that I went to with my daughter was not fun. That's on video too. Um, and it only wasn't fun is because she had a rough time. She's five, she had difficulty, she was not liking it as much, whereas the first one she loved. So who knows, I mean, when they're five, they're temperamental. It does change, right? <laughs> As the older women are like, no. <laughs> um, oh, I love this one. So create a secret signal with your child. Um, some people have said like when your child's on the playground, you know, you have some whatever, touch your nose, touch your ear, whatever, and it can have a meaning between you two. So that when you're not with them, it has that signal. Um, I stole one from an article I read that I now do. Um, I just read this a couple weeks ago. So, and the story was, is that from when this dad was a little, their secret handshake was three squeezes on their hand that said, I love you. So they would be walking, whatever, and they'd squeeze and I love you. So the kid, this was this family's secret signal that they always did. The dad, and they, from childhood, the dad was walking the woman down the aisle during her wedding. Yeah, I know, I was like, mm. <laughs> walking down the aisle and he squeezed her hand three times and said, you know, like, as I love you. Nobody else knew what was going on. She knew it. That, you talk about connection. So I just did this with my daughter because there's a place, that I t uh, sometimes take her to kindergarten, we alternate, and there's this walkway where we walk every day, we you know, line up and then we walk. And I always am holding her hand to, through that walkway. And so the, we had talked about this and I squeezed her hand three times and then she squeezed it back. And it was, this, it was cool because you know, she knew exactly what I was doing. I didn't need to say anything. It was a signal. So I kid you not, is yesterday, or I'm sorry, Friday, um, I'm taking her to school, walking her down, and she squeezed my hand. I didn't, I didn't do anything. She just squeezed my hand three times. I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so it was something now where, I mean, I stole it from them, you know, I, but I like that one. It was just, you know, there's different things you could do, like a signal, a hand, whatever. Um, you know, that, it's something that allows you to have that connection and not have to really sing. And so, um, you know, you can steal the squeeze of three things. So my daughter likes that one. She, uh, she was like, the first time she was like, oh, not so hard. <laughs> um, but she likes it. Um, so this was actually, um, and if you can, I included, there's there not a lot of family meeting pictures, so this was. Um, but if you have, you know, different generations, that'd be great to include them. Um, is you have a family meeting, and this was introduced to me, and this is actually, I didn't have too many New Year's resolutions, I just, I typically don't believe that they work, I mean, we call them goals during the rest of the year, um, and, uh, but this one is have a family meeting, so this was, this was my goal, and uh, this, and so I started doing that, and what it is, is you can pick a time, I mean, it's best probably weekly, you pick a time, and start when the kids are really young, and you just simply talk about how the week went, and then what the upcoming week is going to be like, or what's happening in the upcoming week. And it kind of gets everybody on the same page. And, and my kids really, really enjoyed this. Um, it was interesting because the first time we did this was just a couple weeks ago. Ours is now Sunday mornings. That that's, seems to be a time when we're around. It's not a lot of chaos. And my kids, by the way, are way better in the morning than they are at night. I don't know what other kids may be the same. Like I said, nothing good happens after 5 o'clock. There's no teaching moments. There's no, not, nothing after 5 o'clock. So at you know, 6.30, 7 in the morning, my kids are great. You know? <laughs> um, and they're awake. They get up really early. And uh, so we have this family meeting. And it actually went really well. My son actually was, didn't even prompt it. I said, but we're going to talk about some things that may have, you know, you might want to change that happened during this week. And, and my son was like, you know, to his sister, he said, when um, it seems like she's been having a lot of sleepovers. And when she has them, she excludes me from playing. This is my seven-year-old. <laughs> and uh, I was like, yes, you know, it's working. Um, and he actually was saying, he's like, I felt like she excluded me. I didn't say anything. My daughter then says, well, you know, when you have your friends over, I play with you even though I don't want to do it. 
And so then they started talking to each other about this. And I was just sitting there. I'm like, I looked at my wife. We're both like smiling. And it's like they're they're working this out. They're talking about this. And it actually was something that. I mean, this was the first meeting. I was like, okay, this is going well. And um, so I, I'm going to keep that going. And so we've had subsequent meetings as a result of that. It, it, it's got to be short. I mean, we're talking 10 minutes or something. But it just kind of says, and now my kids, you know, of course, they get up in the morning like, we're having the family meeting. You know, and they like think it's a great thing. I think it has to do something, too, with the fact that they get some money during the family meeting. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I'm going to change that up. It's like a different day. Uh, we don't have allowance. We have, like, money as part of the family. It's a whole thing you learn if you do take Susie's class. It's really, really cool. Um, but that's something else. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I'm like, I just thought they wanted to go to the meeting. It's like, no, 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 they money. Go. <laughs> uh, I'd go to meetings, too, if I got money. And um, so that was a, an important one that I think is have a family meeting. And it's actually, uh, it feels really good for you too, so it's not just for the kids, but actually gives you a chance to talk about something. Now, you don't have to air out grievances with your wife. There, that's really, it's for the kids. <laughs> but, um, you know, so this is something, um, does everyone know what empathy means? I didn't know what it meant when I first saw it, so I'll be honest. Um, so I want to do an example and kind of see, uh, and since you're close, I'll let you do it. <laughs> uh, he already did one. So, pretend you, or uh, uh, let me see if I should have you do, um, I'm going to pretend I'll be the child. Actually, you know what, I'll have you be the child. You can go be the child. And I'm going to do the typical response of a dad when the child falls. Stereotypical dad. Response. So, go ahead and just sit. You know, you're, you, he fell, hurt himself, whatever. Okay? Maybe you're crying a little bit, you're upset, whatever. <laughs> Dad comes over, hey, what's going on? What happened? Oh, you fell. No, is there blood? Is there blood? I don't see. No, you're okay. You're okay. Come on, come on. Let's go. Come on, you're good. There's, I don't see any blood. Wow. You're right? You're right? <laughs> Typical response, right? How did you feel when I did that? <laughs> I mean, did you? Well, did, the, the question is, did you feel like I kind of understood what happened, or did you? Yeah. No. So it was just kind of like, oh, I guess I am fine. Like a kid's gonna say that. So try it now. I'll try it with empathy. Is what something? Go ahead. And this is something I learned in the classes too, because I responded that way. No blood. Good. Let's go. You know. I mean, that's really. It's like the kid's fine. You're fine. So now the kid's upset and crying. So hey, what happened? Oh, wow, that does hurt. I, you cut yourself pretty bad, huh? Is there anything I can do to help you with that? Or is, what, do you, what do you need? Popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> is there something I can do to help you, though? Maybe I can't give you a popsicle, but maybe, you know, do you want to get a washcloth or something? Sure. Okay, let's do that. So, the difference there... And it seems kind of funny, but the difference there, which I never did, was to kind of understand from the child's perspective of what is going on through their mind. And amazingly, this works with a spouse, too. It's amazing how those things go hand in hand. When you have empathy, the child is going to feel so much more connected to you. The difference is, is when you don't have the empathy, and I mean, you're still concerned. You're like, hey, is everything okay? You came over. It's not like you don't care about the child, but you're really not empathizing with this child who in their world that's a big deal they just fell over and got hurt now you don't want to baby them i'm not saying to baby them but you're saying hey is everything okay is there anything i can do yeah that probably does that would hurt if i fell off my bike or that would be scary and you're validating those feelings that's something too about validating the feelings now i'll give you an example of what not to do i just did this uh, my daughter is now in kindergarten and we have some difficulty in the mornings getting dressed so we uh, we try to lay out clothes like the night before it doesn't always happen. So in the morning, we're late. I'm the one driving today, and we're late because my daughter cannot find her shoes. That's what I'm blaming it on. There's probably other reasons, but she was she could not find her shoes, and a breakdown insist. I mean, it, it happened, right? Uh -huh. I mean, complete meltdown. Now in my head, I'm the thinker. I'm the guy. Get the damn 
shoes? Like what? You wear the same things every. Like we put them. We have a little shoe cubby. <laughs> it's not that hard to find your shoes. They're not there. It's like, well, why didn't you put them in the shoe cubby? <laughs> it's in the garage. Like we put all of our shoes are in the same place every day. She didn't do it. She's five now. I mean, I'm thinking like she's 25. You know. But in my head, I, I just can't even understand how somebody wouldn't understand where their shoes are. <laughs> See, this happens to me all the time. This is why I do this stuff. It's because I need this practice. So my daughter proceeds to break down like you've never seen anybody break down before. I mean, it was the end of the... You're laughing because you've experienced it. It was the end of the world that she couldn't find her shoes on the way to kindergarten. Now, meanwhile, this is a couple weeks into kindergarten. Now, I did not handle it right. I said, get in the car now. I went and looked for the shoes, <laughs> threw the shoes in the car, had to get to school. Horrible way to handle that. <laughs> um, what I did do is I took a couple deep breaths, and I immediately apologized to my daughter. And I said, you know what? I just handled that really bad. And she was like, oh, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> you know, she's crying. And it's funny how, I mean, like, they, they don't really actually care, but they do. But what I wanted to, at that moment, I realized is how poorly I handled that situation. And I immediately, I took a deep breath, and I said, wow, you know what? She is five years old. Like, she does not have this figured out yet. You know? She's, she's, in, a, she's in school now, which is completely overwhelming. She cannot find her shoes. And to me, that's no big deal, because I'll just find a different pair of shoes. Now, to this five-year-old little girl, this was the end of the world. And so I didn't put myself in that situation. I just wanted to get the thing to school, because I have stuff that i got to do, too. And so I apologized to her. She said, don't worry about it, as she's crying. And then, you know, it's okay. It's okay. And she finally calmed down. And... The next time, it happened, oh, by the way, it happened like the next day. It's not, but I handled it differently because I stopped and I thought about what it is like to be a five-year-old girl, which is for a guy. <laughs> That's on take two. We're not going to soundbite that one. We have, we have sound bites on our podcast and we like take little clips of really funny things that we say that are out of context or completely horrible. Um, <laughs> That's a good one. And so, as a, as a five-year-old girl, thinking, oh my goodness, this is so overwhelming, I cannot find my shoes, uh, I'm stressed out, and so I handled it a little bit differently, and I said, you know what, that would be frustrating, where do you think you might have left your shoes? And I said it with a calm voice, and I said, you know what, let me help you find your shoes. And we found our shoes. And it wasn't the end of the world. I was more calm, I did it. Now, I had to make those mistakes, and I would say that's not the first time that I had made that mistake. But it was the first time that I caught myself. And that's something that you're allowed to do as a parent, is you're allowed to make mistakes. Because you get to fix it the next time. And the one thing I will say as you go through parenting is, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to learn from it. And that's something that I've taken to heart, because my whole life growing up in this wonderful environment was everything had to be perfect. And I always felt stressed out. And the truth is, is that our kids need to see imperfection and it's okay, but they, you have to learn from it. And so, it's a long way around to getting to empathy, but basically, I learned that I need to be a little bit more empathetic towards my kids, and I need to put myself in their shoes. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect all the time. I'm gonna mess up. You guys are gonna mess up a lot. We all mess up a lot. But like I said, the next day, I can then be a better dad. Or you know what, one day I'm a great father, the other, the other day I'm a great husband, the next day I'm a great son, something like son-in-law maybe, once in a while. Um, <laughs> but that's something where you know, you're not gonna be perfect, and I know, I think women grapple with this all the time, uh, about trying to be everything. With men, it's a little bit more subconscious, and, but the truth is, is that you can't be everything all the time. We can't be the best at every single thing every day, and so, that's one of the things I would take from this is that, um, you know, these are all great ways to connect with your kids. Um, you know, you can read them, make them, just kind of reviewing these. These are all great things. I'll pass out a handout in which you can do that. Um, <coughs> to kind of just remind yourself that things will be okay. Take a deep breath. Um, be mindful of putting yourself in your kid's situation. And... Um, 
you know, things will, things will be okay. And this was at a party. It was fun. Yeah. And that's, that's another thing, of just having fun with your kids. It's amazing as they get a little bit older that you can actually have fun with them. Um, and, and we try really hard to have fun with them quite often. And for us, that could be dressing up at Halloween, um, at New Year's. In fact, my son had to wear his smooth criminal outfit again, <laughs> and so he did that. Um, and so in, even, I think, actually, the first slide, um, I'll go back, sorry. This first slide, which was funny, my children were going, we were going off-roading with a group, and then a hike, and my children insisted on wearing costumes. <laughs> I said, costumes don't really lend themselves well to hiking, but they had to wear a costume. And so that was another fun thing that you'll find if your kids aren't already into costumes. They're going to be. And uh, I used to worry about that too. And uh, I let that one go. Um, so have fun with it, you know, and, and be mindful of trying as, as the dad that you have a really, really great opportunity to connect with your kids. That if you don't, if it depends what works for you. You know, if you live by fear and that motivates you, that's cool. Um, you know, we all are motivated by either fear or love. Um, those are two really, really big things. But uh, it's going to be okay. And uh, you know, as a dad, make that conscious effort that you can connect. And so I commend you guys too for just being here. You know, I think you had said it is. You know, the majority of the time, it's the women who are doing this, and it's okay to. Be sensitive, and still be manly. Um, my mentor had once called me a heart warrior, which would mean that you know you can still be sensitive, yet you can be a strong, a strong guy. I don't think of myself as um, not strong. I think of myself as very strong, but I also feel like I can tap into being sensitive and being caring and being sensitive, you know, touching and kissing and loving my kids um, because they deserve that. So. With that, that's it. Any questions, comments, feedback? These are the different locations. You can, uh, I do have a website, uh, which on the website you can click on, there's the meetup, which if you don't wanted to participate in that, you certainly can. Um, but I suggest the podcasts, that, you know, just because they're easy, you can listen to them at any time. Most of them are anywhere from a half hour to 45 minutes or so. Um, it's Alan and I often talking. He's the dude on the show. <laughs> um, and, uh, but it's about advice. It's not just talking about our daily lives and things. It, the, really, the purpose of that is this kind of stuff. It's um, things that I'm learning, things that I have learned. Like I said, I've taken a lot of classes, which I would recommend. Um, for those of you, the, the class name is The Joy of Parenting. Um, Susie Walton. There's also other people that are to teach it or become instructors. I actually became an instructor of that course, even though I didn't necessarily teach that course. But I just loved it so much. I got so much out of it that I just went and kept kept learning. Um, and also, you know, I, and I, which I don't know if you can tell here too, but I'm I'm kind of high strung and uh, type A or double A, however you want to say. It. <laughs> and uh, with kids, you know, that kind of changes you a little bit, uh, forces you to change. Like I said, you become kind of from dude to dad, but the classes or learning this stuff gives you these tools that, um, you know, keeps your stress level down a little bit, you know, and I need all that, I need that help, and so like that situation with my daughter in shoes, you know, the first one was not good, chest is pounding, trying to get to work, you know, to school, to work, uh, second time though, I saved myself, I saved myself that worry and the angst and all that stuff by just thinking about it and feeling it and saying, what does she need right now, and um, so with my kids, you know, that's a, an area where I like, to, you know, I like to be in control of almost everything. But where I have the control to um, react how I need to be and, um, you know, do the things that are going to be best for my kids. And as I said, to be a, a teacher and to teach them what I want to teach them. So, so what triggered you to come up with this, with this whole thing boost? What triggered you? What made you? What happened? Frustration. Uh, which I, I think you may have come in a little bit after, yeah. but basically, um, I, I had mentioned my mother was like, like a fairy godmother of relationships. That was her nickname, um, <laughs> and literally she was like a baby whisperer. You know, I mean, just like our baby would cry, she'd hold it, like, stop. It's like really, you know, our, our, um, 
she passed away. And so all of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, you know, I have nobody to answer. It's like, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have those answers or nobody to turn to. I had our second child, and my, it's actually my wife went to one of the parenting classes they offered at the school at the time. She's like, I think you might enjoy this. I'm like, I'm not going to be honest. I said, I'm not going to a parenting class. Like, my parents were cool. Like, I'm good. <laughs> Ego. I think, you know, you mentioned, it's like, I don't need no parenting class. I'm fine. <laughs> As I stress, you know. Um, and I started to think about it, and I'm like, well, maybe maybe for me a little bit, I could, maybe I should check it out, you know, whatever. I'm not going to enjoy it, but I'm going to check it out. And so I went, and it was funny, I came back the first night, and my wife's like, how'd it go, how'd it go? And I was like, those were the worst two hours of my life, I want those hours back. And she's like, I'm like, I'm just kidding, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really was hooked, because I realized how powerful it was for me to change my behavior and how that affected my kids, you know, just... And here's the thing I'll, I'll go out on a limb and saying too. If you see kids that act up or misbehaving, it's the parents' fault. It's your fault. If your kids are doing something that they shouldn't be doing, it's your fault until they get to a certain age. But even at five and seven, where my kids are doing something wrong, most of it's probably my fault. Well, or my wife. But <laughs> it's, it, it, meaning fault, meaning we haven't taught them what they need to be taught. And so that's something that I immediately recognized when I had my second kid. My son was getting a little bit older. I'm like, I'm losing control of this stuff. And it's getting harder, you know, as I do not understand what I, because the stuff that I had as an instinct isn't working. You know, all of a sudden my son raised his voice. Whoa, whoa where did he get that from? Oh, maybe it was me. You know, I started like noticing things where it, this is not the road I wanted to go down. And, you know, and so. Yeah, that's when I, I took the class, and then I just kept taking it and taking it. And then I, I realized, it's like, there's got to be other dads that are dealing with the same thing. Um, so that's how it kind of started in combination with, uh, I was actually going to a grief support for my mom. So a grief support group that was all guys. Imagine that. Talking about, you know, talking about death and emotion with a bunch of guys. A little weird. But, you know, and I was, in, I was tapped in to be able to do that. Um, and so that's kind of how it evolved from there. I was like, wow, what evolved? What if I just had a group of guys talking about this stuff? And of course, for the first six months, one or two people showed up, and one of them was my friend. Um, you know, and it just stuck with it. It's been almost three years now that we've been doing this, and um, it's been awesome. So I've got a chance now to talk to other people and groups, and um, and just kind of spreading the idea that it's like it's okay. It's like this is going to happen. And as a guy, we just we don't talk about it, you know. And we're going through some help. Sometimes, you know, and it, it's going to go like this. I mean, it's it's going to go like this, and you know, the same thing is true for the for the women. They have all kinds of ups and downs and stuff. The key is to not be at the up and the down at the same time. You know, that's that's the key, and that's the hard one. Well, you know, I try and be real affectionate and stuff, but one of the things that kind of blocks me is their affection towards mom. Mm -hmm. Where I am getting down to a level, I'm trying to grab them, but. I don't want mommy, mommy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what that is? It's time. It's <laughs> it is time. Uh, <laughs> did you rescue it? I can't even change my daughter's diaper or take her out of the car seat or oh, yeah. anything. I mean, actually, I'm, well, who I'm spends sure. more time with the kids? There you go. I mean, that's it. That's, that's all it is, is that you, that you spend more time. In fact, we would have bath time, and my kids would cry because they want mom to do the bath when they were really little. Yeah, I'm going to lace it. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. No, um, yeah. So, so what you have to do is you have to keep doing it. You have to keep trying, and you have to keep making that effort. And it will turn a little bit of a corner as they get a little bit older. And um, yeah, I even suggest that you go to another girl's weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but she comes up to me. <laughs> well, but you know what? But even, even doing those kinds of things, saying, you know what? Go, like, go, just go to the park. I mean, have her go to the park. Just leave and, and let you do it. You know, so that you can be alone with him and you can spend the time doing yeah. it. It, it, it. It is just the investment of time. That's all it is. And that's why they go to that, you know, that parent is because they are comfortable with it. But as you make that more effort, they will become more comfortable with it. Um, my kids absolutely wanted mom more than me. You know, I, was, I worked every day and I, my wife was at home, you know, and for the most part she worked part time. And it was like, that, that's who they wanted, you know. Um, so it's just, it's time and it's investment and you just got to stick with it. And it's hard not to get frustrated, because I got frustrated, too, when my kids would yell, Mommy, I want Mommy to give me the bath. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, I'm making all this effort, doing all these classes, and it's like, my kids don't even want to hang out. 
which I'll tell you, just happened this past weekend. You know, my wife was away, like I said, and my kids, I was so excited. We were going to sit down and watch a movie with them. I wanted to just sit down and watch a movie. And they said, hey, so-and-so just said I could sleep over, and so-and-so just said I could sleep over. We have these neighbors that we're close with. I'm like, really? That's not, that's not going to fly. I, I want to spend time with you. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> you know, I wish I would have planned something, so I, like, I could have gone out. I didn't have any plans. It was you know, an hour before. Um, so there are times where you would welcome that because you're like, I wish I had a quiet night by myself. I mean, that's pretty cool. When, you, you know, when you're in the midst of all this, having 10 minutes by yourself is going to be cool. Um, but you just have to stick with it. You, know, you have to invest that time. It's, it's hard. <laughs> and it's going to hurt. I was just going to add that we had that same thing, but where I was at work for two years and my husband was home and I was working and it was the same thing where I would come home and I would feel so bad that I'd been gone all day. And it was this big high-powered executive, so really long days too, and the kids wouldn't want nothing to do with me. It would be all daddy, so it was really hard. But then we all had the tables turn again where he, he was at work. And same thing we did, what you suggested, though, where he would read to them. So he'd be at work all day, but then he would read to them every night, and he also started putting them to yeah. bed. But it wasn't so he would have responsibility, but rather that connection and time. Yeah, you do he have to look at it in a different way, because like, that's why I said like my friend looking work. at it saying, yeah. really, i got to put him down every day? Yeah, I'm going to work know? all day. Like, um, <laughs> You do have to switch your mindset a little bit to be like, you know what, I have the opportunity to do this, and this is yeah. the time where I can actually connect with them. Yeah. Um, it, it, it is. It's your, I mean, we, you know, we give the meaning to those external things. It's like it's up to us to decide what that means. And if it's a chore and it's a pain to have to do that every day, you know, then you have to do it. And like I said, there are some days where it's just like, honey, go, your turn. I don't want to do it. You know, I'm, I'm done. That's the thing, too. I mean, if you have a spouse, it's good to have the hand off. And, you know, your turn. Um, you know, that's, that can be uh, very, very helpful in those kinds of situations. So. I would say, too, just from, because we have a couple of soon-to-be twin parents, I mean, I think it's the dynamic when you have twins in those first few months. Like, I can't imagine Chaos. if my husband hadn't been there <coughs> at night and doing different things because... You've got your hands full with one, and when you've got two, you, you don't have enough hands. <laughs> so yeah, I think really, a you have to, it really is a different dynamic. You really have to function as a team, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a whole different you know ball game. And even as they get older now, it's still kind of trying to figure out juggling that um, because they're at the same developmental stage in many ways that you're trying to interact with them and, and get that time in with them. So I think it's. I would just share that, you know, coming from that perspective now, having three-year-olds, that it was so critical those first few months. In a and way, that don't I don't feel, think it is with yeah. singletons. I was going to say, you know, which I'm sure people will say, it. if you can't feel like you're connecting with the child, then at least just try to help your spouse. Mm -hmm. That's it. I mean, that's all you can do. But if you're like, wow, the kids really don't want to eat with me, they don't want to do anything with me, they don't even want to hold, you know, whatever, then support her. You know, she'll at least appreciate it. Get one appreciation. What age were, were your kids when you... Felt that you really connected with them. Mine are just now. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, still, still, still. Um, probably in the my son. Probably in the three, two, two and a half, three ish stuff. Where it sounds kind of cliche, but like where I could actually like throw a ball. Like for me, that was kind of the. And even my daughter too. I, I that was the one thing too. I wanted to be very conscious of like not just doing things with my son, but my daughter was younger. Um, so my daughter can run and throw it just as good as, you know, not better than my son. Um, but that was something where, like, where they're kind of old enough to have motor skills. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I felt like I could come in, you know. Yeah. I mean, otherwise it was me holding and trying to feed. And, and I, I, didn't, I didn't feel that connected to my kids at yeah. that point. I just didn't. You know, I, I love them. Yeah. And I tried. But, you know, I was at work all day. And I'd come home and, okay, bath time. And they're like, oh. You know, they wanted to be with mom. <laughs> They want to be, and mom's a little softer than I am, so. That's, I would want to be with mom too. <laughs> I didn't mean soft physically, I meant soft. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's. One year, four months. One year, months. It'll get there. Yeah, it, it takes a little bit of time. It's, um, you know, that was the one thing too that I, 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 I don't know if I wish I did or didn't, but, you know, there's so many things talking about pregnancy and groups, and there's mom and me and dad and me, whatever. It's like after that, what do you do? 
you know, there's some parenting stuff, but like everything's kind of different. And I realized